Hello and welcome to the Telegraph Land Rover Challenge. Now I used to love competing in the Six Nations, but unfortunately my body is not up to that challenge anymore. So instead I have devised my own championship. Each week a former international rugby player will try and beat my score around the challenging East Newcastle Land Rover course here in Herefordshire. At the end of the challenge, the player and therefore the country with the most accumulated points will win this quite glorious trophy. Now in the last episode, Scott Hastings driving was absolutely, there's no other way to put it other than terrible. In the final episode, Paul Wallace of Ireland tries his luck around the circuit. Yes indeed, thanks Will. Welcome back. Let's kick off by recapping the rules. The guys are going to get into a Discovery 4 and drive around the rugby inspired Land Rover experience course. They're going to get 5 points for each ball they hit and lose 5 points for each corner flag they touch. Stage 2 is the Rugby Skills Challenge, getting 2 points for each ball going through the hole and 10 points for hitting the crossbar. But it's back now to Will. Well I've been joined by the last member of our merry driving band, Paul Wallace, British Lion tourist to South Africa, victor in 1997 and legend of the front row as you can see, probably our stockiest man of the day. How does that yeah. impact upon your driving? Can you get in the car? Are these cars perfect for Just you? Just about fit in, uh, extra ballast though, so I'm mean, hoping for a few discount points on that, you know, carrying that, all that weight around in the car. But yeah, looking forward to it. Used to driving some Boreens around Ireland. Some what? Boreen, small little roads in the oh, countryside. Yeah, but so is that, I mean, would that, is that a Boreen there? That, that would look like it. I, I'll be honest, I haven't got on any that bad, so, <laughs> so I'm looking forward. I think mean, that's more like a river than a boring. Mm. Um, yeah, so l looking forward to now. It's going to be a bit of fun, and uh, I should have brought my armbands. Well, you just, you can't take a prop anywhere. Everyone else managed to get around the course okay. You've got these indestructible machines, which is still indestructible, and yet Walster, what, yeah. what, talk to me, what happened? I, I don't know, was it, was it the extra ballast up front? Was it the lads uh, starting off before me, or uh, You're gonna blame yeah, just the other driving lads. it too, too hard? So you everything. had to push that everything. In terms of pushing yeah. and everything, giving everything, Ireland over the last few years have been going exceptionally well obviously picked up the Grand Slam. How do Ireland look going into Six Nations? Big game, Aviva Stadium this weekend, England coming to town. Yeah, it, England's always a huge game, Aviva Stadium. Uh, it's a very tight uh, ground and I, I think you're going to enjoy the experience over there because it's, uh, the atmosphere should be electric. And look, I've got my 2003 <laughs> shirt from the Grand Slam game against Ireland. Yeah, so I didn't I, want to bring I know, that up. I noticed there's not a, not a mark on you. No, Brandon yeah. just could come catch me all day, chase me around, two tries. Ireland against England in Dublin is always special. Yeah, I know when I was playing, uh, England always had it over us and once or twice we went close, but generally, uh, psychologically, they had that advantage and also the, the, the experience that they had on that side. Uh, now I think it's the other way around. Ireland has the experience, they, you know, got the leaderships with the likes of O'Driscoll and O'Connell, of course, yeah. but also throughout the side, they, they've got some real quality and uh, I think with the record they've had over the years and also we've seen it in the Heineken Cup as well, uh, the Irish sides over the English sides have, have, have had that bit of an, an advantage and I think that will stand to Ireland, especially at home. Well, that sounds like a great deal of optimism. Yeah. Talking of optimism, why don't we bring Rob in and see yeah. how you did before <laughs> yeah. this happened. How did yeah. he get on? Uh, well, he started really well. Um, he just hit one of the corner markers. Right. Showing so good finishing, yeah. good, good yeah. finesse. Yeah. He had 11. Couldn't touch. He all 11 balls? Yeah, all 11 balls. So he's possibly, after me, the best driver of the day. Well, he's well, really coming down to the, the passing. It's all coming down to the passing. So right, fingers well, crossed for that. Fingers crossed. We yeah. know what's going to happen there, don't yeah, we? Yeah, well, <laughs> Quite we're taking well. no prisoners. Well done, buddy. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. That was Paul absolutely flying around the Land Rover Experience course. Let's see how he does, though, with the Rugby Skills Challenge. He needs to get the balls through the holes, remember, if he stands any chance to win. And uh, that chance is disappearing right in front of our eyes. Can he get a ball to hit a crossbar, though? No, I don't think so. 
no luck of the Irish when it comes to the Rugby Skills Challenge. Let's see how that puts him on our leaderboard. We can see he has 50 points there, but a couple of people in first. What's going to happen now? Back to Will. So, on 57, tied first, Yian Evans, Wales, Will Greenwood, England. But as I'm on my own, as everyone's gone home and left me, as it's my competition, I thereby award the inaugural Land Rover Experience Rugby Challenge trophy to myself. You can win a chance to compete against me on the East Newcastle Land Rover course. The details on how to enter are on the screen now. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Yep, if you're up for the challenge, simply head to telegraph.co.uk forward slash Land Rover.